Hello, I'm CoinRingMaker from CoinRingMaker.com, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about all the different types of coin ring tools that are out there, and uh, what you need to get started without, you know, spending a bunch of money. Because honestly, like, let's let's talk about why I'm making this video. Okay, first of all, like this tool right here. This is gonna cost you. This is a Chinese ring stretcher. This is gonna cost you about a hundred to hundred fifteen bucks. You get a nicer ring stretcher like a Pepe Tools. You're spending five six hundred dollars on that thing, and I don't want the cost of getting into this hobby to ruin this hobby for you. So I'm gonna show you the tools I got um, from the beginning up to where I am now, because I suggest starting with the bare basic tools, getting your your fundamentals out of the way, understanding the process, and then investing in tools as you sell your rings as you go. Um, so the first. So the first thing you're going to need to do, the first step in coin ring making is punching a hole in your coin. And this can be really problematic because you need to get the hole perfectly centered in there or you're gonna have problems with your ring later on down the line. Now, when I first started coin ring making, I got this punch and die kit from Harbor Freight. And it's a good tool, like I'm not talking any smack on it, but it's very difficult to get this coin perfectly centered under here and get that hole perfect uh, without you know uh, added tools so I made this uh, guide which allows you to put put your coin in there and then you flip it over and this perfectly fits a half inch punch which will you know, slide this into here and then guide the punch on top until it, it slides into that hole and that'll get you a perfectly centered punch. Now to do that you'll need this Harbor Freight kit which is about I think 40 bucks and then uh, these guides which you can get on my Etsy uh, by going to coinringmaker.com and clicking on the Etsy button. Um, my favorite tool to suggest for uh, getting holes perfectly centered is this little bugger. And this is specifically four quarters. There are auto punch guides out there, but they're very expensive. Uh, this one I think is 30 or $40. Uh, it's on my recommended tool list on coinringmaker.com. And this is what I recommend to get started with because you're gonna get a perfect center every time. It's not gonna cost you much as much as this setup. Uh, but this does allow you to punch different size holes. So as you spend more, you get more options. Um, but as you're starting, I think you should just hyper-focus on one type of coin ring, which is what I did. I hyper-focused on quarters with half-inch holes punched in them. And until I got those perfect, I didn't worry about different hole sizes, different coins, different rings. I wanted to make sure that I could get this right. Uh, so these... These are my two recommendations for hole punches. You don't have to go out there and spend 500 bucks on an auto center hole punch. Uh, and I don't recommend you do that because like I said, I don't want you to spend a bunch of money on this hobby and then become disinterested because it's not working as well as you thought. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more difficult and it does take some practice. So I think you should start with some basic tools. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, punch holes and quarters with these two just to show you how they work and then we can move on to the next step okay so I'm gonna be punching holes in these quarters two different ways to emphasize the difference between spending a bunch of money on tools and just getting the correct tools you need to get the bare basics to get started so like I said this is my recommendation to get started right here and it's real simple you just pop your quarter in here put the top on and this is a hammer I got for a dollar at a garage sale and basically we can just drive this through here now we've got our center punch and it's perfectly centered and now 
I do use a one ton arbor press to get this punch out, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go to my 20 ton press, which I spent, I think, $140 on to punch a hole in the second quarter to show you the difference. So this is my 20 ton Strongway press that I got to punch holes in much larger coins. I needed to punch a hole in a dollar. Uh, so I got this. It was kind of a gift to myself since I'd been working so hard. But you can use it on smaller coins. And one thing I want to point out with this punch and die kit is I've seen people try to center their hole lots of different ways. I've seen people draw holes on here, mark them, uh, use pieces of paper to guide it under here. And really you can never get that perfect center without, you know, something like this, which is, which is what I use. This is a guide I made myself because I had such a problem getting this hole centered uh, before I got this that I designed these. Um, and I kind of got these at the same time. Um, I can use either one interchangeably. Uh, I like this one just because it's quick, it's compact. I can just grab it and punch holes real quick. Uh, but for other size coins, like half dollars or anything else like that, I usually make a guide and use it like this. So we're gonna go over here. Uh, this slides easily into your punch and die kit. And then you just line your punch up with the guide make sure it's right and centered in that hole and then we're just going to bring down this and you can see how much more time this is taking than just using the hammer and that metal punch like there's definitely more options available if you get yourself like one of these presses but you don't you don't have to start with one now see i've already run into a problem i don't have my plates close enough and the punch and die kit is bowing out so i gotta release this i'll go ahead and that get that right on the edge there make sure everything's nice and lined up and try again Bear with me, I promise there's good information in this video and it's really gonna save you quite a bit of money. I'm sorry this has taken so long. I'm still kinda new to using this press. And like, it's a good tool, it definitely works. But like, the point of this video is that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get started on this or to even make decent rings. Starting to feel some pressure, and we got to pop through. So I like to keep pushing this punch through until the uh, the center comes out. And uh, now I'll take both of these over to my one ton arbor press and push out the punches. Now this right here, this is my one ton arbor press. This is a tool I recommend you get if you're going to get into coin ring making. I use this on every coin ring. Uh, multiple times and uh, it's probably like 40 bucks so definitely a tool to consider so I'm just gonna put a smaller punch on top of this one and just push it out and that way I don't have to worry about damaging my dies or my punches that is as I remove them and then we can do the same thing with this one put it upside down put a smaller punch on it push it out. And these just kind of tap out of here. You can see I've got it all the way to the edge. And I can just take this smaller punch and just push it out. There we go. All right, 
you see how perfect that is? That is perfectly centered, no headache, no problem. Uh, the inside cut edge is something we're going to be addressing next, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pull out this other quarter so I can compare it. So here is the quarter from the Arbor Press punch and die kit that I used the uh, 20 ton press on. You can see that that cut edge is a little rougher than the one I used the, the metal tool, but still very nice center. No hassle, no problems. So the next tool we need to talk about is the one that's going to get rid of that, that cut edge. And that is called a deburring tool. And that looks like this. And you can pick these up at like a hardware store for probably like 5 to 10 bucks. And it's just kind of a curved cut edge that's on a swivel that allows you to rotate it and get rid of all this. Uh, sharp metal on the inside there. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I do my deburring over a trash can. Uh, you can do it over like a bin if you want to collect the metal, but I just do it over a trash can. Um, what I do is I, I put this deburring tool in here at about a 90 degree angle, and then I rotate it around until the inside is smooth. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'll just cut away all that sharp edge in there. So deburring tools are like super useful. I highly recommend getting them. Um, you could do this with sandpaper or maybe some other things, but to maintain the detail on the coin, I think this is probably the best way to go about it. And I just clean them up until I can feel that they're smooth. I, I don't trust my eyes, but I trust my hands. Uh, and if they're smooth on one side, I'll flip it over to burr that other side real quick so it's nice and even. And I'll go ahead and do that other quarter real quick. And I'm sorry if I'm popping in and out of frame here. This isn't the best video you've ever seen, but I'm really just trying to give you some good information that I've learned since I started getting into coin ring making. I'm just shy of uh, 300 days into this, just about making a coin ring every day. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. And I just wanna, wanna save you some trouble, save you some money, get you on the right path so you don't you know, give up too soon. Uh, the real reason I'm making this video is uh, a friend of mine pointed out a post on Facebook today. This guy was selling basically the complete set, like every tool offered by Jason's Works, as well as a Pepe Tools ring stretcher. And these are very expensive ring stretching tools. Like this guy spent several thousand dollars on this. And the post said, I only ever made 10 rings and I just want to get rid of these tools. And like, I don't want you to be that guy. So I'm making this video to show you guys that you can make coin rings without spending a whole bunch of money. So now that we've got these nice and smooth on the inside, we're going to move to folding. And I'm going to show you my favorite tools for folding coins. Okay, so these are my recommended tools for folding uh, quarter coin rings. Uh, these right here, this folding ball and this doming block, are not technically required, but I think they make a world of a difference, and I'm going to show you. Um, by folding first with just this, these two tools, and then after that I'm going to fold with this and then these two tools. And I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, so these two tools, this is a 17 degree folding cone and a 17 degree folding die and you can see the measurements for it. It's 0.9 inches and one inch on this side. I use the one inch side to start and what you do is you take your D-bird coin with a hole in it and you're going to pick the side you want on the outside of the ring. I usually want the the year on the outside of the ring. That's usually what I pick. So we're gonna put that face down 
and you're going to try and get this coin as level as you can in this die and then place your 17 degree folding die on top of it and then just fold it and you can see I'm having some trouble here getting this level between the die itself and the folding cone it's really difficult to get this perfectly level which means it's difficult to get it to fold evenly but we're gonna go ahead and fold it all the way down in there and this is what we get it's a little wonky it's not bad like this can be fixed but it's not great which is why I recommend starting like this this is a doming block and a three-quarter inch folding ball and you don't have to go get a bunch of folding balls just get this one and just get a, a doming block almost all of them have uh, something that perfectly fix, fits a quarter I think this is a two and a half inch or three inch doming block uh, you can get them on Amazon relatively cheap I got this one with let me show you this whole set of doming rods which I never really use uh, because I don't like the way they they tilt and move as I try and put them on a quarter it's really hard to get them perfectly straight I much prefer uh, the folding ball and let me show you why I prefer the folding ball because of this boom look at this Look how easy it is to straighten this out. And no matter what I do, that ball is gonna be right in the middle of that coin. And because this is uh, shaped in a, in a curved way, it's gonna fold evenly all the way through. So we're gonna get a nice, even first fold. Look at that. Nice and even all the way around. And then from there, I'll move back to the 17 degree die. Excuse me. Put the 17 degree cone on. Excuse me. On top. I'm burping. And then just finish that fold right there. And that's what we get. And I really, really like that two step folding process. Let's, let's compare these two the best we can here. Really get in on. So this is the one over here that I folded twice. And this is the one I just folded with the 17 degree die. And maybe to the naked eye, they don't look too different, but this one is made way, way straighter and more even. And that's just gonna make it easier to make into a ring. This one, I will probably have to flatten. And I'm gonna show you how I do that real quick. Uh, but you can see the curve on that edge right there because it didn't fold evenly So when that happens to me I'll go back to my one-ton press and Zoom out a little bit and I'll lay it down on here and I'll just get another quarter and Put it on top and try and even it out Just apply a bunch of pressure Rotate it around and these are just extra steps that you don't need to do if you can get that doming block and that folding ball. This is just, it's just a headache. It just makes your rings a little more difficult to work on. But okay, we've got that a little smoothed out, a little more even. So the next step for me on these Kweisen rings is to smooth out the cut edge because you can see it's kind of rough. And if we start stretching these, they'll have a tendency to split along where it's rough, along those micro cracks. Uh, so, so what I use to get these cracks, these rough edges off of these cut quarters is uh, nail file blocks. I like these because uh, they have di like three different grades. So if I have a really deep uh, crack or split, I can start with this rougher one and work my way down. Usually I just have to use this lighter side and I'll just place it on there and rock it back and forth until that cut edge is smooth. As I'm doing this, I'll, I'll periodically check that edge, 
see if there's any trouble spots. But usually this doesn't take very long. And I like this a lot better than sandpaper because sandpaper gets like torn up. And I go through a lot more of it than I do these nail file boards. And these just leave a nice shine, very nice and smooth. We'll go ahead and do this other one. You see that rough edge, see those scratches? That's very dangerous for stretching coin rings if you don't get rid of those. Sorry, this is a weird angle. see that's kind of rough. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this so that the video is shorter and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now that we've got our rings um, folded and sanded off on the cut edge, we need to talk about stretching them. Now, like I said before, this is like a hundred dollar ring stretcher. You can go up to like 600, probably $800 on, on one of these. When I started, I didn't have a hundred dollars to spend on a ring stretcher like this. So I did a bunch of research and this is what I used. This is a super cheap mandrel that I got at Hobby Lobby. And this is a piece of PVC pipe, three quarter inch with a cap on it, which I reinforced with Gorilla Tape. And I actually had somebody comment on an old video of me using this, that I should use like zip ties or some kind of clamps on this to keep this from splitting because it has split on me before. Uh, this is kind of a dangerous tool to use, but if you are super low budget, you can do this for probably 10 bucks. And how this works, get you set up the best I can here real quick, is you'll put your folded coin on the end of the mandrel here and then put this PVC pipe on top of it and drive it down and that will fold this, bring this um, edge closer and closer to the end of the mandrel. And I'm gonna show you me doing that right now. Okay, so we've got our mandrel. We've got our ring on it with the wider end uh, facing down. And then I'm just gonna place the PVC pipe on top of it and hit it with my $1 hammer. And you can see uh, the base of the ring is pretty much touching the mandrel now. So we can take this off. Looking pretty good. And then from here, uh, we can reduce this ring. Uh, but to get it off of here is, is a bit of trouble. And that's when I found out about this hammer. This is a pretty cheap uh, teardrop plastic hammer. I think I got it for six bucks and it allows you to knock rings off mandrels without damaging the ring. I'm trying to do this with my other hammer would mangle and destroy the metal but you can do it with plastic and it gets it off of there. The hammer takes all the, the damage. You can see these rings really like to stick to mandrels. But you can get it off of there. And this one's ready for reducing. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the second way I learned to stretch rings. That's with this tool. This is called a Rathburn ring stretcher. I think you can get them for about $20. Um, and most of these tools you can find on my recommended tool page at coinringmaker.com. Uh, so what you do, there's a base for it, and then there's a rod that goes into it, and then you put your ring on the end of here, put the rod on, and drive it through, and that's going to stretch the ring out. So we're just going to go ahead and do that real quick. 
Now getting these on here is a little tricky. I actually have to squeeze all these splines together and then push it all the way down like that. Okay, and we'll put it on the base, put the rod on there, and then drive it down. Now, just like with the other method, you can see that this ring has some space between it and the ring stretcher, but we put it on a different way. We put the cut edge face down, and we're just gonna drive it until the ring band is, is basically even. Now, when using a Rathburn ring stretcher, uh, you can use a metal hammer, but it's gonna tear it up. You see the top of this, it's all mushroomed out from me using a metal hammer on it. And you'll mushroom out the other end as well, almost to the point where it won't fit through this hole anymore. When I did that, I started using my nylon hammer on it. And that works much better. Like I said, it doesn't mess up the metal, and you can still use just as much force. So we gotta drive that spike out of there. And I'm actually gonna move this down one more rung. I'm sorry, my hand's in the way. I'm gonna move this down one more rung. And squeeze all these together. We're just gonna stretch it out a little bit more. Try and get it in frame. And this time I'll do it with the, uh, the plastic hammer. There we go. Now that ring's looking pretty good. Let me just pop this spike off of here. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, things take longer with the plastic hammer, but you're not gonna mess up your tool. really in there. Well, I'm going to use my metal hammer. I'm a bit of a hypocrite. I drove it too far. There we go. And you can see those gouges I put in it using my metal hammer right now uh, because I got impatient and it's actually caught in there because it's mushroomed out. Now when this happens, you can take a file and file away the edges of this, <laughs> but I recommend just using the plastic hammer. Uh, so I'm gonna have to take a break and file this out, but I should be able to get this ring off of here without doing that. Got a bit of a side project for myself today. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so don't use a metal hammer on your Rathburn ring stretcher because it'll mess it up. Okay, now let's talk about reducing these rings. So we're back here at the Arbor Press. We've got our ring stretched out a little bit, but one side is wider than the other. So that's the side we're going to focus on first. What I do is I, I take my 17 degree folding die and I'll put that wider end face down. And I do this with every one of my quarter coin rings. I get them down to size eight, unless they're specifically for a customer, then I'll, I'll size them to that customer. But as, as I'm practicing, as I'm making coin rings, I'll get them all down to size eight. I just think it's a real nice size to work up from. And to get it there, I will actually use another quarter placed on top in this die. And I'll get it nice and centered. And then apply pressure. And when I do this, I rotate this around and I tap on it a couple times to make sure that that ring in there is centered and it's going to fold evenly. And then we'll bring it down all the way until the quarter is inside of the die. You can take the quarter off and you can see it's much more evenly folded 
Now I can see with my eye that the cut edge is slightly flared out, but honestly, this is pretty even. Um, but I like to put that cut edge face down and fold it just a little bit as well. Now you can see on here, it doesn't need a whole lot. Then we'll tap it, rotate it, make sure we're getting nice and flat. And we'll get a nice look at that ring right now. Okay, now that's nice, flat, and even. And the next tool I recommend getting is a good mandrel. So you've already seen my first mandrel. Uh, this is not a great recommendation. This one is made out of aluminum. It's not very heavy at all. Uh, it only goes from ring sizes four to 10. Uh, I definitely use the crap out of this, but it's not what I recommend you getting. Uh, this is a steel mandrel. It has no ring sizes on it at all. Uh, it's very heavy. It's good for shaping rings but not good for measuring them. This is also not something I recommend you get. Uh, this one right here, this one is stainless steel, goes from 15 to size one. It's very heavy, very nice. This is what I recommend you get. And as you can see here, we've got a size eight ring. And um, this, this is what I recommend you get. It's gonna cost you a little bit more than this one or this one but it's gonna last a lot longer and it's gonna be a heck of a lot more useful. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and review all the tools and I'll say my goodbyes. So my recommendations are either start with a punch and die kit and a nice uh, guide system for your coins or get yourself a specific uh, punch tool for the coin you wanna work on the most. Uh, I suggest starting with quarters, that way you can just follow the measurements of what I've got here. Uh, and like I said, you can find most of these on my uh, website, coinringmaker.com, under recommended tools. So, uh, decide which way you want to punch holes, and then you're going to want to get yourself a folding cone, like this one. I got mine from Legacy Brands. There's several out there, uh, but Legacy makes really good tools, and they're not super expensive and you can get yourself a 17 degree cone from them as well, and that'll help you fold and uh, shape your rings and get them to the right size. You can reduce down sizes and shape your rings with these tools. Uh, and then you've got a Rathburn ring stretcher right here. Uh, highly recommend uh, starting with something like this before uh, moving on to a higher price ring stretcher like this. Um, make a couple rings, make some sales, and then reinvest your earnings into something like this. And then you've got your mandrel and your hammer. Uh, this hammer is really pretty sweet. Let me try and get as much information on there as I can for you. Uh, pick this up at Harbor Freight, like I said, for about six bucks. And then you've got a nice stainless steel mandrel with big ring sizes on it, as well as small ring sizes. And uh, these are my basic recommendations. Like, like I was saying, you don't have to go out and get yourself a big fancy press. Uh, one ton arbor press will do you. Highly recommend uh, getting one of these. And uh, one of these if you can squeeze it in. So these are the tools on my kind of recommended list that you don't really have to get if you can't afford them right away, but I highly recommend getting them as soon as possible. It's just gonna make your rings look much better if you can get that first fold on a doming block. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll probably make another one of these videos as my tools get better and better down the line but i just wanted to post kind of an update on my experience with coin ring making and uh, getting tools for coin ring making and how expensive it can be and how that kind of drives people out of the interest of it um, so i wanted to show you that you know you can do it with some lower cost tools and still end up with some decent looking rings all right, uh, drop me a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and as always, have a great day.